Hello, this is Rupinder Sial and welcome again to Spartan Tutorials. Now, coronavirus continues to evolve. It continues to acquire new mutations which allows it to escape immune system and increase its transmissibility. Now, news reports have come out which talk about the discovery of a new variant, the Delta Plus variant, which has been first detected in UK back in March 2021 and has now been reported from 11 different countries including India and Nepal and even parts of the US. So what is this variant and what are the different mutations present in it? Let's discuss it today. Now the power of genome sequencing is bringing a lot of help to the epidemiology of coronavirus. More and more genome sequences are being sequenced for coronavirus and researchers are tracking the evolution of SARS coronavirus 2 in real time, almost in real time on a day to day basis. More and more genomes are being sequenced and they are being tracked and the phylogenetic analysis is revealing new insights about how fast the virus is evolving and in which regions of its genome it is evolving. Now this new variant which is called the AY.1 variant in the scientific lineage and Delta plus variant in the layman's language. So AY.1 is the official nomenclature. Delta plus is what journalists and lay people would refer it to. So this is the lineage. It is actually a derivative of B1617.2, which was the Delta variant, one of the variants which was responsible for the second wave of COVID-19 in India. So it was detected first in UK in March 2021 and so far it has been detected in 11 different countries and 12 different US states. So you can see with the global mobilization of people as well as trades between different countries, viruses are also, you know, hitchhiking on these routes and then spreading across the globe. This is truly a global phenomenon and truly a 21st century phenomenon. Now the characteristic mutations in the lineage of AY.1 which is the Delta Plus, one of them is called K417N. K stands for lysine amino acid. This is the part of the protein. It is an amino acid. Proteins are made up of 20 different types of amino acids. So lysine is one of them. It has been changed to asparagine. Now this is a striking change because lysine is a positively charged amino acid and asparagine is a polar but uncharged amino acid. So this is a slight change and this is in the spike protein. Apart from that, there are many other mutations in this lineage and there, you can see that there are other mutations also in the spike protein itself. There is a deletion also as indicated by this delta sign. The 157 amino acid is deleted and these are the other mutations found in Delta plus lineage as compared to other coronavirus variants. Two mutations are especially important. One is T95I. So this is threonine which is a non-polar amino acid getting converted to isoleucine. This particular mutation is discovered in the cluster. So there are two clusters of Delta plus lineages that have been discovered. One is in the US primarily and the other one is in India, UK and Nepal and other countries. So T95I where threonine is converted to isoleucine, it is restricted to India, UK and Nepal. Whereas there is another mutation which is called the A22V. This is alanine at position 222 be converted to valine. 
Now, I would like to say that these are not very drastic changes, but it is very hard to predict what kind of interaction changes it will bring in terms of different proteins coming together to interact with human proteins. These are the other coronavirus variants. So as I mentioned in my one of my previous videos, which you can link from here, I will put a link up here. This is the B117 alpha variant. B1351 beta variant earlier they were named according to their geographic locations where they were first identified but now I think it is better we should stick to the official WHO nomenclature this is the P1 or gamma B1525 or eta and B1617 which has two different lineages 1 and 2 so we have kappa and delta so those are the two different variants and this has now mutated into B1617 2.1. This is the Delta Plus variant. So this is a further sub lineage of a lineage. And here is the structure of the spike protein and the location of K417. And you can see this is the structure of ACE2 receptor, which is the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor ACE2 receptor is the main receptor in the lung cells as well as in many other cell types of the human body which interacts with the spike protein it is trimeric in nature as you can see in the diagram here showing three colors and these are the lysine residues which have been changed to asparagine. So K417N, this is the mutation. Now how it affects the binding of spike protein to ACE2 receptor, it, is, it needs to be studied. So here is the analysis by Dr. Vinod Skaria, who is a scientist at Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology in New Delhi, India, where he has shown the structural details of the K417, this residue as I just showed you just now, and also the other mutations which were present in the Delta variant, which was the B16172. Okay, and this is the complete receptor binding domain. So you can see that the K417 is right in the middle of the receptor binding domain. Okay, so this has potential implications for escaping from the immune system as well as escaping the immunity. Okay, and probably even has effects on transmissibility. We just don't know yet. So it is hard to speculate. It is just speculation right now. But definitely we know that it has some immune escape properties. And the scary part is this mutation K417 to asparagine. So this mutation K417N, which is lysine to asparagine, is associated with resistance to these monoclonal antibodies Casirivimab and Imdevimab. This is the antibody cocktail that I also discussed in one of my previous videos. So it is developed by Roche uh, Pharmaceuticals and Cipla is basically selling it in India. And you can see that this is K417N and it is associated with partial to complete resistance to neutralization by these two monoclonal antibodies. So basically the antibody cocktail, it is useless against this variant. And this is the structure of that uh, monoclonal antibody. These are the two fractions binding to the spike protein. So this is troubling. So right now, according to WHO and many other organizations, especially Indian health organizations also, it is a variant under investigation. So VUI. That means that they are studying it. They are not raising any alarm. Variant under investigation. So that means they are just studying it right now, studying its effects, how it affects the immune system, what is its transmissibility, and there is a very low occurrence of this variant currently 
in the genome sequences that are available. So how prevalent it is in the population, it is anybody's guess. We don't know yet and we will see soon with more data as more genome sequences are available. But anyhow, I think the fact that this particular variant can escape this uh, neutralization by antibody cocktail, I think this should be a cause of concern and hopefully the scientists will uncover more details and they will rethink whether from variant under investigation it should be elevated to variant of concern. So I hope this variant does not become a variant of concern and cause more loss of lives. We have already lost thousands and millions of lives to coronavirus and I would also like to stress that this is truly an arms race between the evolving virus and the vaccination as well as the natural immunity that we are trying to achieve. I also talked about the herd immunity. So I think as soon as the countries ramp up their vaccination programs, the uh, the spread of so as soon as the countries ramp up their vaccination programs, these uh, so as soon as the companies ramp up their vaccination programs, the herd immunity threshold is reached sooner, and the virus stops spreading and stops evolving, and hopefully the pandemic is curbed much sooner than we anticipate. Okay, so that was my discussion of the Delta Plus variant. If you have any doubts, comments or questions about this video, please let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.